Hi, it's Dr. Erica, and today I want to talk about the effects of the chronic stress response and what it's doing to our bodies and what we can do about it. So I always start with these three body systems. So from a functional health perspective, when you want to find out how to treat these problems and the symptoms that you may be having, it's important to evaluate these three body systems. So we look at the hormones and the gastrointestinal tract and the detoxification system. We need to make sure that these body systems are working well in order for us to be healthy. And I find that the most common cause of health problems are when these body systems start to dysfunction and that will cause dis-ease or diseases, right? And a lot of times you go to your medical doctor and they're running a bunch of uh, blood work or they're doing maybe some specific testing, whether it's an MRI, an X-ray, or even a colonoscopy, and they're really looking for a disease. And in your blood work, it's looking for something to be out of range so that they can tell you you have a specific diagnosis or a disease, and then they can prescribe you know, any medication for you. So we wanna find out what's going on with these three body systems before you end up with disease. So we're looking for underlying root causes that are causing dysfunction. So we first start off with this first body system, which is our hormonal body system, consists of stress hormones, your thyroid hormones, your sex hormones, um, your brain neurotransmitters getting all out of balance. And when that body system gets out of balance, it's usually caused or precipitated by one of some very serious events. So it could be a death in the family, it could be divorce or family problems, it could be that you had a baby or two or three, or that you're overworked, or maybe you have financial problems, and that causes that first body system to start dysfunctioning. And when that goes on long enough, it's gonna start affecting your immune system. You're gonna have a decreased immune response and in your gastrointestinal tract, you're gonna be starting to get more exposed to pathogens and that decreased immune system it is going to, to diminish that defense system. So you're gonna start acquiring more pathogens. You may start experiencing more food intolerances. You may experience things like leaky gut. And then when these problems start spilling over into the bloodstream, these toxins start to accumulate and we already have toxins in our system. And when we start building and accumulating more toxins, our detoxification systems become overwhelmed. And so we start with what we started with in the beginning is how to, what to do about this chronic stress response because we have not only emotional stressors, so how we perceive an event and the event itself, it doesn't matter. Our body still responds the same way, whether it's real or perceived, but we also have dietary stressors. So, so uh, sugars and simple carbs, rapid increases and decreases in our blood sugars. And we have pain and what I call hidden stressors, hidden inflammation, whether you're experience, experiencing chronic pain, like chronic shoulder or knee pain, and things that you might not even know about, like hidden parasites, bacteria, or fungal overgrowth. These are all other chronic stressors in the body. And when we talk about emotional stressors, we're really talking about these things that we have and experience on a very regular basis. And we don't we, we, especially in today's society, we just don't get away from it. So whether it's fear, 
anger, whether we're worried about our children, our parents, our finances, our job security, where our children are going to school, whether we have job demands, whether we have conflicts in our relationships with family or friends, we have financial pressure, pressures, we're working late hours, we're not getting good sleep, or maybe we have a sick or a death of a loved one in the family. So these stressors really start affecting one of our main endocrine glands that secrete the hormone, our stress hormone cortisol, and those glands are our adrenal glands. And the adrenal glands are responsible for all of these other body systems. So you can see that that hormone cortisol and um, DHEA are responsible for musculoskeletal health, for neuronal tissue health, so for your brain, memory, learning, brain fog, other endocrine functions like balancing blood sugars, our thyroid function, or our sex hormones, and our metabolism of fat, protein, and carbohydrates, so contributing to weight and our ability to break down fat, our detoxification pathways, and it also affects inflammation and our immune regulatory systems. So the importance of the adrenal glands and the release of these hormones are so, so important. And what does that mean in terms of things you might be experiencing? So we have this system, this balance and feedback system in our adrenal glands and the release of cortisol is actually normal. We have this normal release of cortisol. If back in the day, if you were getting chased by a lion, we want to have this surge and release of cortisol so we can run away from the lion. So we can have uh, blood sugar going to our brain so we can think clearly, blood sugar going to our muscles to, um, to run away, shunting away from our digestive system and going towards the muscles, the large muscles that we need to run away from that lion. But over time, in excess cortisol, I call it when good cortisol goes bad, it's going to cause increases and sustained elevations in our blood sugar, leading to things like diabetes, insulin resistance, and it's going to stimulate more fat deposition into our tissues, causing you know more fat storage and more fat gain, causing to weight gain, and it's gonna increase more glucose utilization by the central nervous system or the brain. And there's only so much circulating glucose that we have in our system. So if we use it up quickly, our brain starts to feel a, a kind of foggy and it's gonna cause insulin resistance, contributing to metabolic syndrome and cardiovascular risk. It's gonna slow down our digestion and it's gonna cause problems in our gastrointestinal tract. It's also gonna inhibit sex hormone effects and production that can lead to things like infertility, and increases in perimenopause and menopausal symptoms. It can contribute to bone loss, so osteopenia, osteoporosis. It can contribute to high blood pressure. So we've all heard that stress causes high blood pressure. So, you know, that of course is here. And it can also suppress immune function and change our thyroid function. So what, you know, what exactly does that mean? So you are going to present to your doctor or have these symptoms of weight gain, fatigue, depression, anxiety, gastrointestinal problems, sex hormone problems, pain and inflammation, allergic reactions, ADHD, insomnia, brain fog, sugar cravings, skin problems and autoimmune problems. And it's because these three body systems 
are getting affected. Again, that neuroendocrine or that hormonal body system, the gastrointestinal system, and the detoxification system. So this is what is happening to your body. You're having physiological damage from inflammation, from catabolic, catabolic physiology, which is the breakdown of tissue. You're having insulin resistance and oxidative stress. But the doctors aren't really testing for this. They're just looking and waiting until you have heart disease, diabetes, and then an autoimmune problem. But we really want to catch it earlier than that. And that's why in functional medicine and in my practice, we really address these underlying causes. So we really want to address the stress factor. So your emotional and spiritual connections, the dietary factors, whether or not you have those hidden gastrointestinal pathogens, what's your toxic load. There is a genetics and an epigenetics component and whether or not you're getting good sleep, the right types of exercise that you're not over-exercising, and whether or not you're taking a lot of medications and having surgeries that are contributing to a lot of these problems. So we want to correct the body systems in the order in which those problems occurred. So again, we want to address that first body system, the hormonal body system, and we want to do things like manage stress, give you a diet that's going to be healing and uh, not causing inflammation and blood sugar spikes. We want to focus on a spiritual and emotional connection, feeling gratitude, happiness, love, laughter, and we want to do the right types of exercise and make sure you're getting that restorative and reparative sleep. And then we move on to addressing the gastrointestinal system and the detoxification systems. So I use specific functional lab tests to determine how these systems are malfunctioning or dysfunctioning. So I like to use a cortisol, um, a salivary cortisol test to determine how your adrenal glands are functioning. And we go through stages of adrenal dysfunction. I don't call it adrenal, adrenal fatigue is a very common term that we hear in today's society, but our adrenals aren't really fatiguing. Our adrenals are just responding to the inputs it receives because we are doing all of this crazy stuff to our body. We're experiencing these emotions on a chronic basis. And so our adrenals are responding. And so in this initial stage where our adrenals are functioning normal, we're gonna have ups and downs in our cortisol release. But when our cortisol levels start to get released and it goes up and they stay up, then we're in a stage one of our progression of adrenal dysfunction. And this actually might feel good. You might be like um, working at your first job. Maybe you know you work long hours and you're doing a great job. You're young. You just had a baby and you're you're um, multitasking. You're doing it all. You feel good. But if that goes on long enough, you're really going to enter into a stage two of adrenal dysfunction, and that's when the cortisol levels start to go down and they don't come back up. So you're gonna start feeling really tired, your energy level is gonna go down, and you're really gonna start exposing yourself to a lot more, a lot more gastrointestinal uh, pathogens and the detox systems begin to go, get overwhelmed. And if that, again, goes on longer, then you're gonna enter into a stage three where the cortisol levels are low and they do not come up even after you go on a really nice week-long vacation, you feel good, but you come home and you are still exhausted. So I test these salivary cortisol levels via a, a functional lab test, and we check to see if you are in a stage one, a stage two, or a stage three, and we 
create a specific treatment plan according to the stage that you are in. So for example, if you are in, a, this is a stage one adrenal stress profile, you have high cortisol levels, but a very low DHEA level, which tells me that you are in a stage one. And your cortisol levels have a specific um, pattern that you're supposed to follow. So they're supposed to be high in the morning when you wake up, and there's four times throughout the day where you do this salivary cortisol test, once in the morning, once around noon, afternoon, and nighttime. So in the morning, your cortisol levels are supposed to be high so that you can wake up and you can get out of bed. And then throughout the day, it's supposed to subside in like a slow roller coaster fashion and be at its lowest when you go to sleep so that you can fall asleep. So you want to have, so this particular patient, if you look in the yellow, is above the normal range. And actually in the afternoon, it bumps up where it's supposed to be going down. So that's not only uh, a cortisol um, increase in overall cortisol, but it's a change in the cortisol pattern, which is also going to be affecting you, uh, affecting you throughout the day. If you move on to a stage two, a stage two are tricky and stage twos are when, you know, if you look at this particular patient, this patient again in the yellow looks pretty good, right? Okay, this patient looks pretty good, but the dead giveaway here is that the cortisol sum is within normal ranges, but the DHEA levels are low and below normal ranges. So we know that that person is going into this, um, from this hypercortisol state where the cortisol is high, and now the cortisol levels are going down and the DHEA levels are also low. So that is stage two. Then we move on to a, a, another, oh, so another stage two is, is also that the Cortisol sum levels are within normal ranges. DHEA levels, again, are low and below normal ranges, but this particular patient also has that abnormal rhythm. So they're gonna have a little bump up here in the afternoon. That might be from uh, a decrease in um, uh, blood sugar possibly, and then that might cause some sugar cravings, and that's why it possibly bumps up or maybe some stress in the office, maybe this person exercised at this time of day, but then it goes down. So we look at not just the total, but also the rhythm. And then this is a stage three, and a stage three is, you know, we're getting into trouble here because not only is the total cortisol low, but the DHEA level is really low, and this person will not be feeling well. They're not gonna be feeling rested, any time of the day, it's like a chronic fatigue state. And this person also might be experiencing a lot of other gastrointestinal problems and also may be experiencing some detox overload. And when we talk about chronic stress and being following a certain um, pattern of uh, cortisol release throughout the day, that release of cortisol should follow the rise and sun, fall of the sun. So when we wake up in the morning, the sun is up and our cortisol levels should be higher. And as we go throughout the day, those cortisol levels should come down. And there are these receptors within the body that tell us when it is daytime and nighttime. This is part of our internal clock or our circadian rhythm. And this circadian rhythm or our biological clock really gets messed up when we go to bed too late, when we have blue light at night, when we're supposed to be powering down when the sun is going down, but we have lights on 
overhead in the house, a computer, we're on our, our devices, and that's really gonna mess up our internal clock. When we have the blue light that's getting emitted from our um, computer and our devices, that's gonna decrease the release of melatonin, and melatonin is a hormone that helps us fall asleep and stay asleep and melatonin starts to get released a couple hours before you go to sleep. So if you have tons of light, bright lights on mimicking high noon, that's gonna mess up your circadian rhythm and mess up your release of melatonin. So we like to address this chronic stress response by figuring out where you fall in terms of what stage of adrenal uh, dysfunction you are in. We also test to see how your GI systems and your system and your, your detoxification systems are working. And when we find all of that out, we create a personalized lifestyle strategy for you based on those tests. So we create a specific healing diet. We make sure that you're having the right types of exercise. We make sure that you're getting good amounts of sleep or creating optimal environments so that you can sleep. And we also want to work on other types of stress management. So whether that's meditation, whether it's doing deep breathing or gratitude, all of these things are really going to help with our chronic stress response. And again, our chronic stress response is causing so much of the breakdown in different body systems resulting in all of these symptoms that you may not even be contributing to. So whenever I create a personalized strategy for my patients, I always, always focus on mindset and the ability for us to figure out how we can manage stress. It is so paramount. It is, I feel it is very overlooked and um, it is an important part, and it should be an important part of every holistic and strategy to get your health back on track. So I hope that helps.